to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. Let's pray. Father, I thank You so much for the greatest opportunity in the world, and that is to preach the Gospel. God, I am great. And I am I'm grateful. I'm thankful for You, God. I am so grateful that You've allowed me to be part of a church like this. I'm grateful, God, that You've called me to preach the greatest news in the world. I thank You. But God, I cannot do that without Your help. I cannot do that without Your help. You're anointing. God, I want my words to be words that will prick hearts. And that only happens if they're anointed. So turn my mouth of clay to a mouth of stone. Uh, my, and turn it to a mouth of bread, God, that I can feed this congregation. Allow me, God, to speak with clear words and clear thoughts. I ask you, God, for an anointing that will break every bondage in this room. I rebuke the devil right now that wants to try to bind my thoughts. I rebuke the devil that wants to try to hinder this service. I pray you go break the anointing is released. In this congregation, I pray that the power of the Holy Ghost is released in this room. I ask you to help me today to preach this gospel under the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. This morning I want to encourage you with a very simple word. A word that I believe is, and I know it's very familiar, but as I believe it's a word that is directed to us this morning by the Lord. Romans 8.28 is quoted, it's written in book covers, it's written in the back of your books. You know when you sign your name, people who go to church will write Romans 8.28 there. It's probably been under eye patches on Tim Tebow's eyes. And, but do we really understand the meaning? We can put it on church signs, we can put it on bumper stickers, but do we really understand the true meaning? Do we comprehend what the Lord is saying? You see, in this room this morning, people are excited about all things work together. They get excited about the possibility of hope in their life. They get excited about knowing that everything's working out. They, they feel the celebration in the room. They feel the atmosphere change when everything's going to work out the way they need it to work out. But this morning... I want to give you some encouragement. I want to instruct you and I want to guide you because there is true hope this morning. Amen. There is a way out this morning. There is true liberty and true freedom. There is a way out of depression and a way out of bondage and a way out of addiction. And that comes through Jesus Christ. The Lord. He is the only way to get to the Father. And there's so many people that says, Oh, I want all things to work out. All things. All things are going to be good. All things are going to be blessed. But only if you make a partnership with Him. And that's the underlying message throughout this entire theme this morning is that it is one thing, partnership with Jesus Christ, Amen. then all things. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All things, my life is blessed because of Him. My life is protected. He yeah. is my protector. Yeah. Psalms 121, verse 7 and 8, The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Listen, you need to know, when I make a partnership with Him, I trust all things are going to work out because now I'm in a partnership, but I'm also protected. Amen. And I am encouraged this morning that whatever I submit to Him, He's able to keep, He's able to preserve, but thank God He's able to keep me. God goes before me, He goes behind me, He's beside me. Everything in my life is working out because God, Jehovah, the Creator of the universe, is my God. And because of that, listen, if you really want deliverance in your life, you first give your life to Jesus Christ. Then He keeps you free from the sin that's in your life. Some of you came into this church this morning. You're bound by alcohol and drugs. and You're bound by pills. Even though they've got a prescription written across the label. You're bound by the intake of prescription drugs. And you need to know if you want to really get free this morning, here's what you do. You give your life to Jesus Christ. You surrender to Him. He keeps you. Not only does my God deliver me from evil, but He keeps me from evil. I don't know about you, but sometimes I need a keeper. Sometimes I need a God that says, no, 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 no. You're not going that direction because there's a trap there. Sometimes I need a God that says, I know what goes ahead of you. I've already been there. I know the trap's on the side of you. I've already been there. So, boy, I'm going to lead you down the path of righteousness for His name's sake. I'm going to take you down the path. Hey, just keep on letting Him follow you, letting Him guide you, letting Him lead you, letting Him be beside you. I've got good news. He, all things are going to work out because He is my protector. Thank God I know all things are going to work out because He's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. He's not only is He my protector, but He's my provider. So if 
Timothy chapter 4, verse 19, but my God. Everybody say, my God. My God. You see, it all starts with partnership. It doesn't happen because you just show up one day. It's because He is your God. My God shall supply all your need according to the riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. When I begin to partner with Jesus, He begins to provide for me. You see, some of you are expecting God to provide for you like He's your sugar daddy. You might have a sugar daddy on earth, and some of you just looked up with. He's talking about sugar daddies. Listen, you gotta understand, just because you got somebody that takes care of you on the earth and you don't deserve it, I don't believe God wants you to shack up with him. He wants you to partner with him. Oh, God, I'm gonna hurt somebody's feelings now. I might as well just start over. You better understand. I know you might have a boyfriend. Oh God, do I even want to go here, John? You help me. Listen, you're on the front row, and the front row's got to protect me when somebody starts throwing stuff, all right? <laughs> In the earth, we have this mentality. We can live with somebody because they can help provide our needs. We find an attractive older man if you're a woman or an attractive older woman when you're a man. Hey, they've already been successful. Let me move in with them. Let me live with them. Let me act like I love them so they can take care of all of my needs. Listen, God ain't going to be your, 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 your little fantasy. God's not going to be something you can shack up with. He wants all your life. on that. That's all right. I didn't think you would dance on that point, but you need to know God is your provider. Right. And he wants to be your partner. He wants yes. to be your husband, not your adulterer. Yes. He wants to be your wife, not just your lover. He wants right. to be your everything. Stop using right. this excuse. Oh, well, he'll provide for me one day. He's not going to provide until you give him your life. Yes. Well, God hasn't done anything for me yet. Why should I ever partner with him? How do I know if I love him if I don't move in with him? Wow. Oh, y'all are so quiet. It's this kind of stuff, Sister Helen, you and your neighbor there, y'all just hold hands because, it, listen, it's this kind of sermons. I just smile. And I, just, I just smile and talk about the love of God <laughs> because you got to understand something this morning. We are living in a world that believes it's all right to do anything you want to do, but I still have a Bible with strict commands. I still have a Bible with strict You can live in society and be like him and still make it to heaven. But the Bible says there's only one way to get to the Father. That's through Jesus Christ. Let me go ahead and step off the deep end. And the Bible says without holiness, no man shall see God. It's still without holiness. God hasn't done anything. He, why would I ever partner with him? He won't do anything for you until you partner with him. Amen. Just nod. I know some of you are scared to say anything. Just nod. Four down. Psalms 145, verse 15 and 16 says, The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat. Everybody say, In due season. In due season. Thou openest thy hand, and I satisfy the desires of every living thing. 3 John 1, 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. See what I'm trying to tell you? God wants to provide for your needs, but it's based on the condition of your soul. It's based on your partnership. It's it's based on your relationship. If you want to be blessed, then get partnered with Him. Get healthy in Him. Get loved by Him and show your love to Him. Then you'll walk in the provision and the blessings of God. The eyes of all who love God wait on Him. And in due time, God's going to raise up the righteous. In due time, God's going to receive your blessings. Brother Chris, I don't see His provision. Brother Chris, I don't see how it's going to work. Well, you just keep your eyes on Him. Keep believing. Keep holding on to the faith. Keep seeing Him. Yeah. Keep seeking Him. Keep praising Him. Sooner or later, God's going to send your blessing. You just don't give up in times of trouble. Don't give up in times of battles. All things work together for the good of them that love God and are called according to His purpose. Keep your eyes on Him. He's your protector and He's your provider. Amen. 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 Yes. Oh, all my visitors are like, oh, what have I got myself into? A church of God. Amen. A church of God. Church of God, we're Pentecostal. That's what you got yourself into. Just hold on that. It's too late for you to leave now. We're all going to look at you when you walk out. <laughs> Church of God. That's what we are. Church of God. Now, Number three, God. all things. Not only is God your protector, not only is He your provider, God is also your restorer. God still restores. He still brings life back together. He still brings <laughs> pieces back from all the ends of the earth. Isaiah 58 verse 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. 
and satisfy your soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to dwell in I know it appears in your life that things are dead I know it appears in your life things are barren I know it appears in your life that everything's messed up because of bad decisions you've made. Amen. Yeah, I'll say that again. I know things in your life are messed up because of bad decisions you've made. And you're having to suffer the consequences of bad decisions. But I've got good news for you. God is a God that restores the soul. God is a God that puts the pieces back together. He restores broken dreams and broken relationships. He restores broken bad reputations. God is a God that restores the soul. Thank God. You might be broken and barren and dry now, but God is moving you out of a place of dryness and into a place where there's water. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know the situation of my life, Brother Chris. You don't know that right now I'm so strung out on pills I can hardly sit here. You don't know that right now I've got so many drugs left over from last night's party. I'm still on a buzz and I see three of you standing on the platform. Listen, I've got
He's my salvation. Yeah. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. Can I tell you this morning, He's still the light. Yeah. He's still the salvation. I don't fear what man can do unto me because the Lord is still my strength and my life. I will not be afraid of the enemy. I will not be afraid of the future. I will not be afraid of the altar because my God is still God. Psalm 28 verse 7, the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in Him and I am helped. When are you helped? When you begin to partner with Him. When are you delivered? When you partner with Him. When are you set free? When you partner to Him. When, do, when does life begin to make sense? When you partner with Him. It's when you begin to connect with Him and trust in Him that you're helped. Therefore, my heart began to rejoice and with my song I will praise Him. When do you begin to praise Him? Once you begin to partner with Him. Listen, you know why? Some of us got our shout on this morning because I'm a partner with King God. I'm a partner with the Son of God. Thank God. I'm an heir to the throne of God. I've got a home in heaven. Thank God one day these old dirty people walk down streets of gold. One day these hands will run down walls of jasper. And I'll walk through gates of pearls. Thank God. I do not worry. I do not worry. My God is still able. Amen. All things work together. Yes. And I'm not afraid because God is with me. 1 John 5 verse 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, and even our faith. Yes. Victory. All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. You are an overcomer. Amen. He becomes your protector. He becomes Amen. your provider. Amen. He becomes a restorer of yes. your past. He begins to put the pieces back together. Yes. Now listen to this. All things work together for the good of them that what? Love, love, love the Lord. Yes. So it all hinges on your partnership. It all hinges on your love. Yes. Do you love Him this morning? Yes. Do you really love God? Let me ask you a few questions. Do you love Him not only in your speech but in your actions? Yes. You. Have you partnered with Him? Have you asked Him to be the Lord of your life? Not when you were eight years old. Thank God for those who get saved at the age of eight. I hope we have a whole bunch. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm talking about somebody who's been saved at eight and been saved since eight. Yes. Don't tell me you got saved at eight and now you're so drunk you can't hardly sit up in here. You ain't saved no more. Right. You backslid. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about somebody who's living in partnership right now. Yes. Somebody who hasn't divorced God and gone living with the devil. I'm talking about somebody who's still married to Him. Amen. Everybody smile real big at the back. Oh, we don't believe in backsliding, but well, I do. Yes, if you can't tell me you hugged Him when you were 12 and 13, 21, you loved on Him and married Him and you bore fruit with Him and now you're strung out on all kind of mess, that means you've divorced Him and you're living with the devil. Amen. That's called backsliding. We church of God. Amen. We believe in backsliding in the church of God. Amen. <laughs> oh, I'm nervous, Chris. <laughs> we believe in repentance. Yeah. Amen. To the Amen. 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 Let me ask you a question. Do you live for Him? Do you live for Him? Do people see the love of Christ in your life? Are you living in right relationship with Him? Hallelujah. Things do not work out for those who do not love God. Right. They work out for those. All things work together for the good of them that love God. Yes. My blessings hinges on my love for Him. We know that God loved us. We know that Jesus died on the cross for us. Yes. We know that His back was beaten to a bloody mess. We know that He went into a tomb dead, but three days later He came out alive. He paid the price for the remission of our sins. Because of Him, I can be made whole. Yes. It's partnership. Yes. It's relationship with Him. But do you love Him? All things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called. Yes. Some of you are saying, oh, He hasn't called me. Wrong. I'm excluded Wrong. now because I'm not called. Really? Wrong. Aren't you the whosoever? Whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. Aren't you the whosoever? Whosoever drinks this water shall never thirst again. Aren't you the whosoever? Whosoever lives and believes in Me shall never die. Aren't you the whosoever? Whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. Matthew 11, 28. Come unto Me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Yes. I think He's calling you. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in what? Time of need. Yes. Sounds like he's calling you today, Madison. Sounds like he's calling you today. 
He's calling you today. He's calling you today. He's waiting for you to come. He's waiting on you to come. He's waiting on you to allow Him to put the pieces back together. All things can work for your good when you partner with Him. See, He wants a partnership. A partnership involves everything. I'm going to say that again. Partnership involves everything. In your life, he wants it all. And see, listen, there's two types of people in this room. I'll say three to make us feel better. One type is somebody who's lost and they need Jesus. They're not, they're not a partner at all. And in a few minutes, you're going to kneel in this altar and you're going to give your life to Jesus and you're going to, you're going to accept him to be your partner for everything. That's the first type. Sinners on their way to hell. Sinners on their way to an altar about to get saved. That's the first group. Amen. The second group, people who love God but will partner with Him with some things but they don't partner with Him with everything. People who love God but they won't let Him have their depression. People who love God but they won't let Him take that bitterness. People who love God but they won't surrender their family. They love Him. They're saved and they don't partner completely with Him. You need to come to Him and have everything. Now this is the third group to make us feel better. The people who say, I'm partnering with everything. Brother Chris, he has every part of my life. But thank God for you. And you need to celebrate this morning that you understand all things work together for the good of the Lord and are called according to His purpose. It works for you. This morning, stand with me. So what group are you in?